Hello and welcome to the first day of our summary on GST 201. That is Nigerian people and culture. So this particular course is a very, very interesting course that exposes you to the uh, major, major uh, groups we have in Nigeria. That is major tribal groups we have in Nigeria to tell you a lot about them, their history, both in pre-colonial times and all. You know, everything you need to know about this group, just for you to know and understand what different parts of people in Nigeria looks like. And it's one of the courses that is easiest when it comes to passing, like GST 2 one of the courses that students pass so much, all right, compared to other GST courses. So, you should be looking forward to having exciting times studying this particular course. You can get the course material. I'm going to drop a link um, on the description side of this particular um, course where you can go and get the full material. That is the full course material for detailed study, but we're using a summary. And I'm also drop a link for you to get this summary just in case you need it for personal studies as well. So this is going to come in handy for you when the examination is um, getting close by. Don't forget to subscribe. Okay, if you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to so that when next we'll upload um, a video, you will get notified and you can come watching. Also, remember to book us. If you are a student of Open University of Nigeria, you definitely will need our support services, be it as regards your TMA, course registration exam, payment of your school fees, you know, project writing, whatever it is that you want um, us to do for you. We are open to serving you. Just click on the link that you're going to see that will direct you to our WhatsApp platform and there will be waiting to take your orders. So without further ado, I'm going to run through um, the initial part of the course material. I'll just try to, you know, summarize um, everything for you. In when the material started by talking about um, six major tribes, okay? We have both on the northern and the southern parts of Nigeria. So on the northern parts, you will see tribes like the Aousas, the Fulani, the Jukuns, the Kanuris, um, the Nukbeis, the Galas. So those were the major tribes in the northern part of Nigeria that we are focused on. And on the southern part, you had the Igbos, the Yorubas, um, the Sekeris, the Uhubos, the Benin, and um, which other one? I think the Ijo. Yes, the Ijo. So we have the Benin, the Yorubas, the Igbos, Ijo, Isekiri, and Ohobo. Aside from these um, tribes I mentioned, there are other tribes that are also big deal. So, in the southern parts, we have, um, don't forget, the southern parts, we have Ibibio, do you understand, and others. So, don't get it twisted, just in case you are coming from those places. Don't feel like we are ignoring you. We are just talking about what you have in the course material. Okay? So, you are listening to the voice of Okadike Fine Chico Stewart, and I'm popularly known as the boss. Yes, I am the CEO of the Boss Education International. So what I told you earlier is what we do. We provide students um, learner support services to them. So you can always come in contact with us. If you are watching this video, it means that you are a student or potential student of Open University of Nigeria. You can always come to us and we'll be willing to assist you. Okay? Now, The first thing I want you to know is that what Nigerian people and culture is a very, very, very interesting and exciting study. It's a very, very interesting course. I said that earlier, and it's one of the courses that people pass um, with very, very little effort. Now, the interesting thing about this course is that there's a lot of names. 
Some of those names might sound funny to you because they are not coming from that region. All right. Some of the names will be sounding quite funny to you because they're not coming from that region. And it's understandable. All right. And then aside from names, we have a lot of dates, a lot of dates, a lot of events. So um, if you're not a fan of history, you might at some point really not enjoy the the course but being a fan of history or not one thing i know is that when you come from a place do you understand when you come from a place and they are talking about that place you always have this interest that is why they say it's very very interesting and even when you don't come from that place but there is something about the, that particular environment that connects with you uh, perhaps you want to come there for work you want to relocate there you want to get married from that region you know it will build your curiosity to want to know more about that particular region so whatever it is that has brought you into this particular institution making you one of those that are going to be studying this particular course i believe that thing is strong enough to make you see reasons to love this particular course okay now yoruba can be described as one of the major ethnic groups in the southern part of nigeria yes i told us that earlier so there are others aside yoruba that we are going to be studying okay now the majority of yorubas are found in some western and central states of Nigeria stretching across Oyo, Oshun, Ogun, Ondo, Lagos, Kwara, and Kogi. If you don't know the states um, in Nigeria, wow, wow, wow. I don't know what to say here. You just need to go and learn because I know when we're in primary, secondary, well, secondary, maybe, but in our younger days in formal educational structures, yes, they taught us we were reciting the states and capital. Uh, yeah, oh my. So, and if you look at Nigeria, we have about six geopolitical zones, and these zones um has different states under them. So the states that has majority of people that Europe has are the states that are majorly within the south um western zone. And aside from them, you can also see Yoruba people in some central states. All right. You see them in some central states. States like Kogi, some part of Kogi, we see Yoruba people there. Some part of Edo. All right. Even though they did not mention that in the um, material we are using, you still find some part of Edo people having Yoruba um, roots. All right. You see them in Kwara. And, you know, places like that. These places I'm mentioning are places that has other tribes as predominant member of that state. So, Yoruba is not the only ones dominating that state. Those, these states, do you understand? But states like um, Oshun, Oyo, Ogun, Ondo, Ekiti, Oshubo, that is Oshun, yeah, Oshun. So, those states are majorly Yoruba you know, dominated states. Um, we also have Lagos. Okay. Yes, Lagos is a Yoruba state. Or you can say is a state within the Yoruba um, land. All right. Now, this group, that is the Yoruba um, ethnic group, is believed to have come into existence between um, 20... Or to 1000 um, BC, that is when they came into existence. That is some years, years, many years back, thousands of years back. So 20 or 2000 to 1000 BC, that is before. Before Christ. All right, so note that particular number of years. 
Now, until today, the history of Yorubas, the history of the origin of the Yoruba people remain controversial. Yes, till today, the history of the origin of the Yoruba people remains controversial. Till today, the history of the origin of the Yoruba people remains controversial. All right? Why did they say it's controversial? This is controversial because there are many versions. If you go to the course material, you will see that there are many versions to the origin of Yoruba people. Okay, so as we continue, we get to see uh, more of that. All right? In some of my um, videos, I will also be working with the course material. So there are some times I want to go into more details by exposing you to what is in the course material. Because I always tell people, if you want to pass your exams resoundingly well, you need to study the course material, then use some of these materials that are extras to support. So you shouldn't discard the content that the school has provided, you know, for extra materials from any business center. So you should study your material, then other things that you can find around that will help, you know, stick everything together and make it, um, you know, what's the time, what's the effort you then you appreciate. So, in the course material, you will see that there are different versions, okay? They told us the stories of how these different versions, um, presented the origination of the Yoruba people, all right? So for that reason, because we don't just have one particular uh, version or one agreed or acceptable story behind the origin of the Yoruba people, we can say that what it is what controversial. When something is controversial, it means that thing is, you know, quite debatable, all right? Now, in the book, History of Yoruba, which was written in 1950, Johnson traces the origin of Yoruba to the East. So, this is uh, Johnson, one of the people that actually provided us with um, details on how Yoruba book came to be. So, in this particular book, you know, his professions were highlighted, all right? Yes. And in that book, it was stated that the Yoruba originated from the east. So when they say from the east, we mean the eastern part of the world. That should be somewhere around Asia Minor. Okay. Asia Minor, the northern Africa, um, not eastern Africa. So those are the places that we always call the east. All right. Now, in this book, History of Yoruba was written by Reverend Samuel Johnson, Reverend Samuel Johnson, all right? Now, according to him, Yoruba originated from the northeastern area of Africa, just as I said earlier. So, we say northeastern area of Africa, we're talking majorly about Egypt. So, Egypt, okay, the Sahara uh, Desert, um, Saudi Arabia, they, those ones are not um, Africa, Saudi Arabia and Co. They are not Africa, but they are, they are all in the same region. So that's what we say, we call them East, right? Now, it is from Egypt, after several years of journey, that the Yoruba finally settled in Leife. So he's telling us that these people that are Yoruba today, we are part of those people that we are in Egypt. All right. And they kept migrating, they kept moving, perhaps in search of food, in search of shelter, in search of water. They kept moving. And as they kept move, kept moving, um, they came to Ileife and they settled there. And a tribe was formed. So, so we'd be like, hey, if it is possible, but people are in Egypt, they are not black, how come? Yeah, it could be that 
they they migrated, but they not migrated. It was not just a a straightforward journey. They could have been moving for years, going from place to place, you know, and along that period of traveling and enduring different kind of harsh weather realities and stuff like that, you know, a lot of changes was coming to them until they finally found themselves somewhere they can settle. Do you get just trying to like give meaning to the version of this the story all right now Oduwa is believed to be the first leader that led the Yoruba to Ileife so in this version they were being led by Oduduwa and um, they came to somewhere in Ileife known as Okin Ironfe so that that place Okin Ironfe is located in Ileife now note how they spelt the name Okin Ironfe and you can see the o, o in the OK is capital. And the O in the Oranfe is what's capital as well. So if you are to type it, let's say they ask you a question in examination. And the exam is a, what do they call it? The exam is what they call a fill in the gap. All right. Trying to be basic as possible. When you are typing in, okay, type it properly. So, King Rafa is believed to be the center from which the world was created. O King Rafa is believed to be the center. So, it is the center from which the world was created. So, the whole world was created from O K Rafa. Now, in this paper, that is... Um, In this paper, which is Yoruba land up to 1800. Now, mind you, if you go to the course material, the topic is trying to teach us about the people of Yoruba, okay, before colonization. So, what happened to Yoruba land after or during a time of colonialism is not covered. What they are looking at was before the white men came to Africa or came to Nigeria, what was Yoruba land looking like? All right, so that is what this topic is all about. So, and in this period, 1800, um, colonialism hasn't really started. If it has started, it will definitely um, not be that serious. Okay, let me just put it that way. So, essentially, everything that's going to be contained in this paper will be all about the ancient Yoruba, you know, dynasty. All right. So in this paper, Akin Jogwi and Ayon Daily gives us a full picture of what Oke Oran first version is all about. So in this case, the material is now telling us about another version. So we have seen the first version. All right. So the first version was by um, Reverend Samuel Johnson. So that is the Johnson's version we have seen in his version. He was telling us that what the people traveled all the way from the east, okay, and they came down and settled as Ileife. That is what Johnson was telling us. But there's another version which is the okay or our first version. So this okay. Our offense version is different from what um, we saw earlier. Okay, so we are going to get deeper into it. So this version is not going to be telling us that they traveled from somewhere. It's going to be telling us something different from that. But just know that there are two versions present the course material. One is the Johnson's version. The second is the okay or on phase version. So let me just like paint this a summary of the picture for us. Then we now continue what we have as our outline. Now in the okay wrong phase version, it was said that um you know God okay 
let me just put it that way. Uh, God sends his children, all right, to the world, and he gave them some materials, gave them sand, calabash, you know, or if I don't want to say God, the, 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 the people that were coming or that were sent had certain materials with them. There was, I think there was a calabash, there were sand, there were a cockerel, there was a cockerel rather. So these were things that they came with. And then on their way, the person that is leading them is supposed to be like their leader, got drunk with palm wine. So that is what made them ask us this question. Dash got drunk with palm wine. So that is Obatala. He got drunk with palm wine. So on their way to the world, he got drunk with palm wine. Now, the drunk leader, which is what Obatala became unfit to continue to lead them. All right? So just imagine as soon as the leader getting drunk, the person is misbehaving, you know, that cannot, he cannot really perform his duty. So because of these developments, Oduduwa, one of the members of the group, all right, sees the symbol of authority from him and eventually led the party to the world. So he brought them to the world. Now the site on which Oduduwa landed, which Oduduwa was not their leader when they left, but it was their leader when they arrived. So the land they landed, okay, is known as Oke Oronfe, and that is located in Ileife. So the two versions actually, I think, agree in something, and that is on Ileife. So they really respect or regard Ileife as a very, very principal location when it comes to the history of Yoruba origination. When the story of the origination comes to play, Ileife is a prominent um, setting, all right? I think that is something that they both agree on. Because the first one said that the people moved from the east and they came down to Ileife. And this one is saying that when Luduwa came from the skies or from wherever he came to, from, okay, with his cohorts, they landed on, okay, Ralfe, Ileife. Now, on arrival at the site, Oduduwa sat down. He sat down the five pieces of iron and placed the lump of earth on them. So, these were part of the things that they came with all the way from where they were coming. All right. So, there were pieces of iron. There was a lump of earth. There, were, there was a cockerel. And it was the cockerel that spread the toes on the earth. Okay, so when he spread his, his toes on the earth, dry land appeared more like. Okay. Now, away from that, Oyo is best known as the world's major kingdom that eventually emerged as an empire in Yoruba land. Oyo is best known as the major kingdom that eventually emerged as the empire. In Yoruba land, so this is when they are talking about um, the socio political structure of the Yoruba people. Okay, now various traditions believe that Oyo was founded by Oron Mio, the son of Oduduwa, is Oron Mio. So, this great, great dynasty or empire was being founded by a certain person known as Oromiyo, who is the son of Oduduwa. Remember that Oduduwa was their leader. He was the one that established um, Yoruba. Okay. He was the one from whom Yoruba came to be established. He was the one that um, that we saw earlier that landed at Ileife. All right. So his son, you know, grew up to establish the great Oyo Empire. Now, Oromiyo, the son of Uduwa, is credited with establishing present Bini dynasty. All 
Okay. So this time around, they are talking about um, the accomplishments of Oromio. So we want to like bring us to notice him and see all his accomplishments. All right. So the son of Odriwa is credited with what establishing the present Benin dynasty and Oyo Empire, which is the original um, thing that we are talking about here, was founded in the middle of the 15th century. Okay. Now, Oyo Empire was found in the middle of the 16th century. A century later, it became very powerful and prosperous, exceeding his authority as ex extending his authority as far as that whom I saw. Um 15th century, we we're talking about it where we were discussing the good study guide. And we know that a century makes up um 100 years makes up a century. So a century is made up of 100 years, all right? And um, currently, we are in the 21st century. So if you do your mathematics right, the last century, which was between 1900 to 1999, is the 20th century. The one that came before it, between 1800 to 1899, is the what 19th century so if you keep going on and on you see that the 15th century should be about 1400 to 1499 now a century later that means about 100 years later when we talk about that means around 1500 to 1599 the Oyo empire has become very very powerful that is established his authority his stretch his um influence down to Dahomey. So Dahomey today is located in Republic of Benin. All right. Republic of Benin. So in actual sense, all these place that we know today as Lagos, Ogun, everywhere was all under the Oyo Empire. Now, the Oyo Empire was very, very unique and exceptional in its system of government. The Alafi was the head of the Oyo Empire, and the Alafi was regarded as the lord of many lands. So, lord of many lands, that is the head of the Oyo Empire, the Alafi of Oyo. Mind you, we have been talking about the what, the social, political, so the government system. How do they lead themselves in the Yoruba kingdom? Okay. Before colonialism, so they are trying to expose us to it using your your empire. All right. So, the Alafi, who is the leader, was assisted in his administration by a retinue of officials made up of priests, priest officials, and eunuch. All right. Now, if we talk about eunuch, don't forget, eunuchs are meant to serve. To serve palace palaces you know they help the, the the king to minister to his wives all right
and in order to avoid a situation whereby we start hearing things like the queen or, he, or the princess is pregnant and it is an illegitimate, illegitimate child those male servants has to be um, castrated. That means their reproductive organ has to be taken out. And that makes them a eunuch. So eunuch is like a male attendant without reproductive system, without the male genitalia. So that is, that is what I'm talking about. So all these people are all there to work alongside their larvae different capacities okay now theoretically the laughing was the fountain of authority and was therefore regarded as the companion of the gods it was that is what the companion of the gods because of the word a fountain of authority that is being bestowed on him. His powers were often limited and regulated by the Oyomisi. So for checks and balances, so what that what this is actually trying to portray is that some of the things that we see today happen in our present day government where there is checks and balances and different um provisions in order to avoid you know abuse of power. Some of these things has been in existence in our community way, way, way beyond our, or before the advent of modern style of leadership or rulership. Okay. So that is all your message for you. Now, Bashan Ru acted as prime minister. All right. So the you see we are there to as serve as watchdog to regulate and limit the excesses of the alafi if need be and then we have the bashan who acted as the prime minister now the oil mercy has had the power to remove any alafi especially when he appeared dictatorial or transgressed the laws of the land so when the um alafi becomes too power drunk he start doing things that we are really not meaningful. The Oyo Messi can come together and put him out of power, right? So such was how powerful the Oyo Messi's were. And then aside from Oyo Messi and Bashan, there is also the Oboni, the Oboni court. So they played mediatory role. In conflict between Oyomesi and Alafi. So sometimes that could be issue, that could be disagreements, okay, between the Oyomesi and the Alafi. So in a case whereby the Oyomesi is beginning to see the Alafi as being dictatorial, when the Alafi feels like he's just doing his normal job, all right. There is a sharp disagreement that is becoming too um, difficult to come to terms with. All right, the Oboni court will step in. So when they step in, they are coming to play the words mediatory role. They are coming to settle the disagreement. They are not coming to add fire or take side. They are coming to settle them both. Then another another um, structure that we have is the army. Okay, so this is a what a converted. Um, this is a, um. This usually comes with a converted uh, title, known as what area no kokon for. Remember, we are still talking about the what the Oyo Empire. So you can see that in Oyo we have a laughing. And this Alafi is being supported by a lot of officials and eunuchs and priests. You know, these people work together with him. The, uh, uh, the Alafi has to work with 
or you may see who are there to check his exercise and make sure that's what checks and balances. And in a case where there is an ag disag there's disagreement between the or Allah Afin and Oyo Messi, the Oboni court will come in to mediate and you know bring restore peace. Now away from this group, we also have the army. All right, more like those that protect, you know, the, the, the empire. There is no way you can have a strong empire without a strong army because it is the army that we that we keep going out to conquer and conquer and conquer. Like it's a military that that conquers other militaries and then you can now absorb them into your coast and they become your subject that by extending your um, your 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 reach or your authority. All right, so they they have it's very very powerful army setup, and and this army is being confirmed with a title, all right, which we have seen here, all right, written as area on or concon for. Now this army area on or concon for was expected to live outside the capital all right expected to live outside the capital because they are there to protect to see that no enemy comes into the capital they were credited with performing important functions such as stability of the empire expansion as well as keeping and um, this dissident territory in check so you can see that power they say expansion so they are the ones that will go to war Conquer other regions and you know take over their territory for the empire. They are also the one that will ensure stability, ensure that what we have is not taken away. So that's their work. The provincial government enjoyed considerable autonomy. All right. Allah Fin used the Bere annual festival to acknowledge the renewal of allegiance of the provincial government to him. So the the empire. We definitely have provinces, all right? Um, taking us to the Bible, for those of us that are Christian, if you remember very well the book of Daniel, the Bible said that, that there was a king, okay? King Dairos, and there were three presidents. Daniel happened to be one of the presidents, and then there were 120 provinces, all right? So, the province, the provinces, we are being governed by princes. So these princes, we are under the president, and of course, the president was to be under the king. And of course, in that scripture, we are meant to understand that Daniel was even promoted above other presidents. So he was seen to be ahead of his contemporaries. All right, it was that interesting. So I'm bringing that up because of what we're talking about empire here. Remember, he, um, that empire that we're talking about in the Bible was the Babylonian Empire. I believe, yeah, Babylon. They are the one that captured, they killed, they captured Israel and they took some of them as slaves. Do you understand? So that is how empires are being built. They, they keep capturing and conquering other kingdoms and they become their subjects. So these people that they have conquered, will the people that are going to be leading them will be determined by the main empire. So, for example, when um, Israel was under the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire, the, 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 the Roman, the, they had a representative, they had someone that was to serve as a governor over Israel, okay, he's there, he's, he's, in, he's in support, he's, he's in loyalty, he has the, he has the, um, he has to submit to the empire, which in that case was the Roman Empire, do you understand? So he is not a full king in his own right, the king is still the king of the empire, all right? 
or perhaps because the 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 um the one that is the, the emperor now in this case because he cannot be everywhere he now place him as a prince or a governor do you understand so that governor needs to what to pledge allegiance regularly so in this case the oyo is the empire now there are different provinces under the empire and these provinces are being governed by different princes or governors or whatever that they are being called all right so once in a while they need to you know keep paying homage to the emperor and the emperor in this case is the who is their laughing so it is that bare festival that actually you know makes this provision possible i believe you are understanding it now the alafi use the bere annual feather to acknowledge the renewal of allegiance of the provincial governors to him so it is in this place that he renews their allegiance to him to know do that stay allegiance to him or not so if, there, if he sees that you are not allegiant to him he could remove you you know from that particular position so that is where we're going to be calling it a day for this particular episode we have spent time to talk about yoruba and their origin different versions involved and of course their socio-political structure don't forget to get the course material itself to get a broader view of what I am talking about. And if you need our services in any capacity, be it in, you want us to help you with your TMA, you want us to um, assist you and guide you all the way through as you pay your school fees, register your courses, whatever it is that you want to do, all right? We are here for you. We are consulting, coaching, and counseling based organizations. So we're always there for you once you are available for us. All right. Or once you seek us out, we will not um, deny you what we know we can give you. So until I come your way again, this is still. The voice of the legit boss, MSC. Every other boss out there is just a calm, sad Make sure you subscribe to this channel so that when next we make a post, you will be receiving it. Stay blessed.